New projects are advancing slowly, moving hardware into the testing phase, new designs, new capabilities. The next 12 months will see an intense rise in flight tests, demonstration launches and high priority flights. Some are on time, others are not. Let's check the flight status of some of this new hardware and these new capabilities. controlled lifting body makes an unpowered descent to the runway, completing another test run. Technology. A neat feature about these gloves is they have an advanced material here that enables you to interact with a capacitive touch screen. So any type of tablet you'll be able to interact with uh, while wearing these gloves while suited fully up in the suit. The lightweight helmet, akin to the Russian Sokol design, is attached to the suit and sealed with a zipper. The suit is designed to be worn in the capsule and not for EVA purposes, and only comes in Boeing Blue. At the same time, Boeing has the capsule trainer in service, and NASA astronauts assigned to the commercial crew roster are getting a taste for the new capsule. What the part test trainer does is it gives you a chance to, to get a, the feel and look, you know, where to look, how to use the procedures when you go to a, a screen in the background, you know, when I hit this button, what's it going to look like?
Test schedule calls for an uncrewed orbital test later in 2018 and a manned flight at the end of 2018. This is very ambitious, however, and previous experience of spacecraft engineering suggests it may be 12 to 24 months premature. Another company with an ambitious timetable is SpaceX, whose Dragon capsule is looking for an uncrewed flight early 2018 and a manned launch four months later. The new breed of entrepreneurial and commercial imperatives may just make it. The interior design of this capsule is more in line with high-end sports cars. Maximum use of carbon fiber, titanium and other lightweight alloys, coupled with the latest in electronic display and glass control surfaces. Far more commercial in feel than the usual NASA or Russian practicality and minimal comfort ergonomics. Their capsule is well along its testing phase, having completed both static and pad abort exercises, including parachute deployment test. A wild ride indeed. With room for a crew of seven, the Dragon capsule may well be the first commercial entity to launch and land astronauts from the ISS within a year. sometime in the next 12 months. The newest space-capable nation, New Zealand, is preparing the second launch of its Electron rocket. Powered by Rocket Lab's homegrown 3D printed Rutherford engine, their second test launch is imminent. Designed for the small satellites in low Earth orbit, 
at a fraction of the standard cost. If this second test launch is successful, then Rocket Lab may drop the third and final test flight in favor of full commercial deployment next year. Blue Origin's reusable new Shepard rocket and capsule system has proceeded successfully through the testing phase, including launch abort and single parachute landings. It won't be long before six paying passengers will fly into space. New Shepard has cleared the tower. There it is, 70,000 pounds of thrust pushing that crew capsule. Okay, so those three mains are reefed right now to keep them small. The reefing will move shortly to fully expand, as you can see. And touchdown of the new Shepard crew capsule. Origin is also developing a multi-stage version to reach orbit. The new Glenn could send payloads or passengers into orbit with a two or three stage variant, although it is still some years away. telescope has also been delayed by a year. A planned Ariane 5 launch will hopefully take place mid-2019. Ariane 5, Soyuz and Vega launches are due for an upgrade. At the European spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana, the new launch facilities for ESA's Ariane 6 launcher are being built. At least the big hole is there, the excavation is done, and the launch zone buildings will soon appear on schedule. The independent access to space is of course the primary objective and uh, we always used uh, European developed launchers to fulfill this objective. We were lucky enough that uh, we were very successful also on the commercial market with Ariane 5. We, had, we still have over 50% of the commercial market. As we all know, uh, this environment is uh, exposed to fierce competition. Uh, the offer of launch vehicles from 2020 onwards will be significantly higher. And uh, we have designed Ariane 6 we have designed it to cost, we have designed it to be able to go against this fierce competition in 2020 onwards. And for this, of course, we also use this launcher to deploy European flagship programs like uh, Galileo. This move is associated with a change in the governance of the European launcher sector, based on a sharing of responsibility, cost and risk by ESA and private industry. We are in the middle of the full development of uh, the launcher Ariane 6 and of the base, which is ELA-4 in uh, Kourou. Uh, I can say that currently everything uh, goes well, it's on track. Uh, we are now in the situation where the configuration is clear. We know exactly uh, the, what the configurations are with uh, the Ariane 62 and the Ariane 64. The first one is for institutional payloads, mainly because it's a single payload version uh, where we can launch up to 4.5 tons in a sun synchronous orbit. And the Ariane 64 is a, enables a dual launch, which goes up to 10.5 tons in an equivalent geostationary transfer orbit. 
ESA and uh, its member states have a new role in Ariane 6 in the sense that we change governance. Governance by giving more responsibility to industry, to the private sector, while the public sector has defined the high level requirements, which means that we said we want a cheaper launcher, we said we want an environmental friendly launcher, we want a flexible launcher and this is absolutely key in the current situation to be ready to catch new markets and Ariane 6 will be the right response to that. We can say that uh, European industries are f working full speed ahead. We just had uh, maturity gate six, what we call, where we can consolidate the industrial structure. We aim at uh, starting the first batch of production next year, spring next year. So now uh, we can say the industries are ready, they are full speed ahead, and we will start to produce Ariane 6 from next year onwards. It is very clear in a definition of a space power, the independent access to space is part of it. Ariane 6 and Vega C is the new family of the European independent access to space. Vega C will cover the deployment of the Sentinel satellites for the EU's Copernicus program. Vega C will increase Vega's current capacity from 1.5 to 2.2 tons on polar orbit, which is the most common for observation satellites. For Ariane 6, the pad will be different from previous launchers in Kourou with a horizontal preparation of the stages. The first launch is still on target for some time in 2020. Extensive works going on at Kourou, they will not affect the upcoming Vega launch of the European Aeolus satellite slated for early 2018. Second 
the spacecraft was assembled in its launch configuration inside a clean room at the European Space Research and Technology Center, or ESTEC, in Nordwijk, in the Netherlands. It has been dispatched to the spaceport in Kourou for its mid-2018 launch and seven-year flight to Mercury.